Mom and Dad, today we're gonna talk about Alien Covenant. You gotta be kidding me. Are you wearing the same clothes as last time? Yes, I am wearing the same clothes, and no, I'm not kidding. That movie's is bad. Is that what you were going to say, Dad? Well, I hate to break it to you, but you are wrong. This movie rules. It's the best Alien movie since 1986, and today we are gonna talk about why. Okay, if we're gonna talk about Alien Covenant first, we need to talk about Prometheus. This movie was a big deal. After many, many years of people like Paul W.S. Anderson dragging the Alien series down into ever-increasing depths of shittiness, this was Ridley Scott, the guy who started the whole thing, returning to make a prequel that promised to tell us the origin of the space jockey and the xenomorph and maybe humanity itself. I was really excited. And then I saw the movie. And I was pretty disappointed. Don't get me wrong, the movie has some really good stuff in it. It's full of astonishing visuals, there are some great scenes, and you've got Michael Fassbender stealing the whole thing. But it also suffers from the classic prequel problem of prioritizing explanations over telling a story. And a lot of those explanations are pretty boring. Like it turns out the space jockey is just a muscly pale dude, and when they wake him up, he goes to hop in a ship to destroy the Earth, and then big things smash into other big things and people run away and this isn't what any of us wanted to see. And the story keeps lurching forward with out of nowhere plot developments. Like Michael Fassbender is suddenly evil with zero motivation and the main character cuts an alien out of herself, which is a great scene that the movie then instantly forgets about because suddenly Guy Pierce is there in old age makeup and wants to live forever. What is this movie even about? Prometheus then does one of those stupid franchise starter endings where it promises the real story will actually be in the next movie. And then it ends on this really lazy bit of fan service where a proto-xenomorph is born for no other reason than for fans to go, hey, I recognize that. Anyway, I wasn't very excited about the prospect of further Alien prequel sequels. I was surprised when the trailers came out and Alien Covenant basically looked like a classic Alien movie. No engineers or space jockeys or humanity secret origin anywhere. So I went into the theater opening day with no expectations and was pleasantly surprised to discover that the movie was awesome. And then I watched it a few more times and yeah, still awesome. So let's get right into it. And, uh, spoilers ahead. Right away, as in right in the first scene, the movie starts solving my problems with Prometheus. So I mentioned one of my issues there was David, AKA Android Fassbender's out of nowhere turn to evil. Well, this movie opens with a scene that should have been in the last one. Here we get an introduction to David's fascination with creation and the idea that he will not only outlive his creator, but is in a way a superior being. And that is gonna come back. I'm pretty sure in between movies, Ridley Scott realized that the mythology of the engineers is actually boring. They're just identical pale people with scrunched up noses that don't add anything to the original movies. So here, in a 30 second flashback, he just wipes out their entire race. Kills them all. Now, real genocide is very, very bad, but this particular instance of fictional genocide? I think it's good. In terms of prequel stuff, yes, the movie gives you an origin for the Xenomorph, but unlike Prometheus, the movie has more in its mind than just telling you, here's where this thing came from. And plus, the origin of the Xenomorph is a key part of David's characterization and overall arc. Here's how the Alien movies have always worked. Each movie contains certain core elements that you can always expect. You know, like a mysterious distress signal, or people wandering down dark hallways and dying horribly, or some chest bursting, the eggs, that kind of thing. And then, each movie puts its own spin on the format. Alien is the isolated haunted house movie. Aliens is the bombastic action movie. Alien 3 is the bleak prison movie. Alien Resurrection is the gonzo sci-fi adventure movie. And now, Alien Covenant is the gothic horror mad scientist movie. Ah. So here's the gist. There's a ship with lots of humans on it out in space heading to a new planet to colonize it. The crew is all made up of couples, which is sweet for a short time, but there's an accident and the captain dies. Side note, if you are a person who hates James Franco, good news, you get to watch him burn to death at the beginning of this movie. Anyway, they pick up a weird signal featuring a John Denver song from a mysterious planet that appears to be habitable, and the crew goes, hey, that looks better than another several years in hibernation, so let's go. So they head down to the planet and things seem cool until they turn out to be uncool. For them, I mean, not for us. For us, it's very cool. In this crew, we've got Catherine Watterson as our stoic hero, Billy Crudup as the shitty leader, Danny McBride, the goddamn greatest, plus a bunch of other people, including the wonderful Amy Simons. I'll admit some of the crew members are a little underdeveloped, but that's a minor issue. 
And there's Michael Fassbender as another android, this one named Walter, who is not as creepy or evil as David. Now, I want to address one of the major complaints that I always see about this movie, that all the characters act really dumb. I think this is actually an issue in Prometheus, since there you have these specially trained people being really bad at the specific things they're supposed to be great at. Like the animal expert reaches out to touch the space cobra, and the map guy is the one that gets lost. That's just dumb writing. And here, sure, most of this could have been avoided if the characters wore full body coverings and like spacesuits, but then there wouldn't be a movie. Have you ever seen a horror movie before? Characters are going to make decisions you disagree with. If no one ever walked alone down a dark hallway, these movies would be way more boring. And also, all of these things happen in the other Alien movies. Plus, these people are encountering things they didn't know existed and have no protocol for. Why should Billy Crudup expect a facehugger to jump up out of an egg at him? That doesn't usually happen with eggs. And I don't recall anyone complaining when John Hurt looked down into the egg in the 1979 movie. And he did have a spacesuit on and still got the facehugger attached to him. Anyway, what I'm saying here is I think it's totally fine that people freak out and make some dumb decisions when aliens start ripping themselves out of their friends' spines because honestly, I probably would too. Okay, so I was saying earlier that every alien movie has some similar horror stuff with the aliens, and the horror stuff in this movie rules. So the people go out exploring, and a couple of them get these spores inside their bodies, and suddenly they're sick and vomiting blood, and little aliens are ripping themselves out through their bodies, and it's gross and scary and so cool. And then later on, there is some vintage, unpretentious 80s horror-style stuff where the xenomorph kills this couple having sex in the shower. There are some quality kills in this movie. My personal favorite is when the alien is behind the guy in the shower, and it shoots its retractable inner mouth through his head and out through his mouth. So it's like double mouth action. That sounded weird. Anyway, it's nighttime and these little aliens are massacring the crew. And then out of nowhere, the other Fassbender, David shows up looking like he stepped out of a Final Fantasy game. He's got long hair and a raggedy cloak and a flare gun. And he drives the aliens away and is like, come with me if you want to live. And they all follow him to this old dead ancient alien city. And suddenly I'm like, wait, hold up. This is all new and I have no idea where this is going. And now they all hang out in David's creepy abandoned alien castle and gradually realize that they should not trust him. And we realize that the earlier stuff, that was just a warm up. This part is the real movie. All right, buckle up kids, because I now present my big Ridley Scott theory. In 1979, he made Alien, which has one character who is an android. And so Ridley Scott goes, holy shit, androids are great. I should make a whole movie about them. And so he made Blade Runner. But then over the next couple decades, during his black rains and white squalls, he forgot about his passion for androids. Until he made Prometheus. That movie features an android in a supporting role who also happens to be the most interesting character in the movie. And suddenly Ridley remembers how much he loves these things. And he goes, wait a minute, this alien prequel series? It's gonna be all about the androids now. It's the story of the androids. And so you get Alien Covenant, where at first it seems like Katherine Watterson is the lead, but no. This movie is all about David. I mean, the movie's opening shot is an extreme close-up of David's eye, pretty much a direct quote of this shot from the opening of Blade Runner. Covenant retroactively makes Prometheus a bit better since we can now see that the series is really David's story, as he grows beyond what his creator intended and beyond his creator, and then becomes a creator himself. See, this is where the movie really gets into gothic horror territory, as we see that during the 10 years since the last movie took place, David has totally become a mad scientist. He cut up and experimented on Numi Rapace's character from Prometheus, and he wiped out the engineers as an experiment. And the humans who think he's brought them there to help are actually there to be his new specimens. See, he lured them there because he'd run out of living flesh for his experiments. And here we get the weirdest, coolest, funniest stuff in the movie, which I think is some of the weirdest, coolest, and funniest stuff in any movie from 2017. It's not often that we're awed by visual effects anymore, but the long unbroken take of the two Fassbenders interacting as David teaches Walter to play the flute is actually astonishing. And the David-Walter relationship is the deepest in the movie. It's the most philosophically interesting, it's oddly sexual, and the work Fassbender is doing is amazing. Also, you get the two Fassbenders kissing which is a weird thing that no other 2017 movie had. And now to address another complaint that I hear all the time, that in the final act when they're back on the ship that it's too obvious that David is pretending to be Walter. Guys, that's the point. 
Ridley Scott knows we've seen enough movies so that when we don't see David's dead body, we're going to suspect that he's not really dead and that Walter is David in disguise. Why do you think he had David cut his hair earlier so that they look identical? And through the whole climactic sequence, he lets us keep wondering about it and being suspicious. And while the heroes are fighting off the xenomorph, while Walter watches and doesn't really help, we have this nagging feeling. It adds to the tension. And when the movie finally lets us know for sure, it's not a twist, it's a confirmation of what we've been afraid of this whole time. Also, I listened to the commentary track, and Ridley Scott basically says all of that. And so we get this dark as fuck ending that's just incredible to see in a 2017 blockbuster. The surviving humans go into hibernation right as they learn their trusted android helper has been replaced with a twisted evil version who will almost definitely conduct horrifying experiments on them. And David, in a way the hero of the movie, puts on some Wagner, vomits up some xenomorph embryos, and admires the thousands of human specimens he has to play with out in space, essentially having become a god himself. Look, I know this movie is not for everyone, it's weird and dark and gross and bleak, but man, if you dig this kind of thing, I don't know how you don't enjoy this movie. Ridley Scott disguised a movie about an android descending to godhood as an alien prequel. After Prometheus, I had zero interest in more of these movies, but after Alien Covenant, I want to see like eight more and I could care less how it connects to the original Alien. I just want to see what kind of fucked up shit David gets up to out in space. This is a cruel, nihilistic movie that pretty much loathes humanity. Like, all the human characters are couples. So when people die, they're not just dying in front of co-workers or other soldiers, they're dying in front of their wives and husbands as the movie revels in their suffering. Like I said before, Ridley Scott loves androids, and it's pretty clear which character he cares the most about. Okay, quick lightning round. Here's a bunch of my favorite little moments in this movie. I love the dorky little hats they all wear when they go out exploring, and how Danny McBride gets the slim pickings from Dr. Strangelove hat. This shot from inside the Era Canal, when Walter punches the alien in the mouth and it melts his hand off. When David thinks he's all cool and then gets the author of the poem Ozymandias wrong. I love the setup and payoff of the nail. How there's a fourth act to the story, just like in the original two Alien movies. Side note, I don't know if anyone saw the movie Life last year, but as far as Alien knockoffs go, it's pretty good. The alien using its retractable mouth to knock out the camera is a great jump scare. David saying, I'll tuck in the children. It's such a beautiful villainous line. There's some nice symbolism in the two uses of the Wagner piece. In the opening scene, it's weaker, just played on the piano when David is a slave. But then in the final scene, when he is the master, the piece plays in its full orchestral glory. The whole medbay sequence is just a masterclass of suspense filmmaking, with action beats and reversals and escalating tension. It's great. This might seem too general, but the entire design of the engineer city and the castle and David's workshop, it's all really great. I love the futuristic medical stuff with the little goopy balls used to seal up wounds. This shot is really sleazy and gross, but also super effective, and I love it. Okay, well, I hope I've convinced you guys to give Alien Covenant another shot. And if you still don't like it, just remember that your opinion is bad and wrong. All right, great chatting with you guys. As always, I'll see myself out. getting here. I never see a car outside. And we never pick him up from the train. Is he walking? He couldn't be walking. Where do those footprints go? To the barn. It's fine. I couldn't help it. Sorry. I'm ready. <laughs> You're having a much better time than you were earlier. I am. I'm warm now. I was frozen at the barn. That helps. Okay, ready? Yep. Yeah. And action.